Hi, so because we did that gear cutting video, I was asked some really interesting questions. A couple come to mind, and that was to talk about gear ratios, and I've done a video on that. And the other was to do something on peg gears. Now, peg gears actually really are interesting because, of course, gears don't exist in isolation. They have a history and a, and a development. Peg gears came about when some bright spark noted if you stuck a peg on a wheel, the wheel wouldn't slip. It would knock the next wheel. And that's doesn't sound like much, but actually it's an awesome discovery because, of course, peg gears were the foundation of um, windmills and watermills. Now, when they made the pegs that went in the sockets of wheels, those pegs were made of a hard-wearing timber, but they would wear out. So being pegs, of course, is a big advantage is you can just pull them out and put a new peg in. So they lasted for a very long time. Now, they have their uses today as well. They're not something that's obsolete. They're something that's actually really quite useful. So I thought I would go into peg gears a little bit and make a little arrangement of peg gears that would do something interesting. Now, peg gears are really a disc with pegs stuck in it. I mean, <laughs> sounds awesome, doesn't it? But you can stick them in that way, or you can stick them in that way. If you stick them in that way, you can put a disc top and bottom, and that's how you form this, which is a cage gear, as it happens. So cage gears are great, because if I have a peg gear here knocking the cage, I can put a 90 degree spin in that rotation, and have the rotation come in at one angle and go out at another angle. Hugely important to be able to do that, and really easy to do with peg gears, because peg gears are tremendously forgiving when it comes to the construction of them. You don't need to get that much right in order to make a peg gear, and that can be really awesome if you're using hand tools or a minimum set of machine tools to construct yourself a set of gears that will do something. Now, you can make small versions like this with a little more than a hole saw, and that's what I've done, exactly what I've done here. I've taken a hole saw, I've chopped up some dowel into some lengths, driven those into the holes that I drilled out and made a cage. I'll be making a couple of those, but you can make them any size you want. And here's one that I'm preparing for a much larger gear. Now, obviously, doing something like that, a disc at 30 centimetres, can be a little challenging when all you've got is the basic machine tool set or a hand tool set. Now, I'm going to show you a little method I use to cut those out using nothing more than a chop saw and a sander. So let's have a quick look at that. So I want a bunch of circles 30 centimetres diameter. So what I've done is taken a bit of plastic and drilled two holes in it 15 centimetres apart. If I fix one of those holes in my bit of timber where I want it to be, take my pencil and stick it in the other hole and just go around. Hey presto. Now I did used to use string, but I found the string stretched and that was a pain in the neck. Now I need to draw in a whole lot of other ones of those. In lots of ways to cut uh, circles that I know of, including routers and all kinds of things. But let's say for example you don't have a router, but you've got one of these. Now that's an essential tool. I think loads of people have got a chop saw, so that's why I chose to do it this way. All I've actually done is screwed a bit of timber to the bench at the right height here, and I've got a steel peg in there that is the right distance from that blade. Then I've taken myself a square piece that I cut. So remember, I marked those circles, I've cut it out square. I've drilled the centre to the same size as that peg. All you do is stick your bit of timber on the peg, if you can find it. There it is and then chop through it. Obviously being careful not to cut your fingers off, but <laughs> just chop through it. And just progress around it. As you progress around it, what you'll do is you'll cut yourself out a nice circle. Do that for this um, circle number that you want. I've got six of them, so I'll do that six times. I'll get a rough circle. Uh, we can then dress that up by putting it in something like a drill and spinning it and holding some sandpaper against it. We'll dress it nicely. But that's a really cool way, I thought, to share with you on how to cut circles. Just thought I'd share with you how I tidy up the edges. I use that same jig that we made with the metal pin and the bit of wood, but I've clamped a belt sander to the bench and I put a screw in there so that's actually free to lever. Now it's pretty much circular, we're actually just roughening up the edges. So I stick that on there, press it against that, turn that on and rotate it. And 
and that tidies up those edges nicely. Okay, I think that's awesome for making big wheels out of. Really handy method, really works well for me. We are, of course, going to make some little gears out of this because we just want a gear set and I have a job specifically in mind. For that, we need two cage gears and one peg gear, but the peg gear is going to be at 90 degrees. So I have to make the other cage, and again, it's really simple. I just cut the number of those that I need. Now, when I'm deciding how many to put in here, what I need to make sure is that on the other gear, the peg can actually get in there and out there without fouling the cage. So on this particular one, they're at 30 degrees. So every 30 degrees, there is a peg in that cage. And that means when I use this dowel on the other gear, the gear can get in and out without fouling and without catching, which is important. And that's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to deciding how many teeth you're going to put in this thing. Because the thing doesn't work in the ratio of the teeth, the thing works in the ratio of the wheel. The teeth are really just helping you knock the wheel around, and as long as that tooth can get in and out of there, it really doesn't matter. And that's very cool. It's one of the very cool things about peg gears. It's like I said, they're tremendously forgiving. So I've chosen 30 degrees apart, which gives me 12, teeth, uh, 12 pegs on there. I need to cut 12 pegs and then just slot them in there, glue them in and slot the top on. So that's what I'm going to do to have two cage gears. Okay, so there are the cage gears mounted in a little frame so that we can spin them. Now, if I put a cog here and turn that cog, obviously what I'll be doing is I'll be turning the input 90 degrees to give me output on that shaft. And there is the peg cog. Now, you'll notice I've drilled holes all the way around, but I've only put in pegs in just less than half of it. Now, there's a reason for that. If I'd filled that up, put that in place and turned it, then I would just get a single rotation on that shaft. But if I do it halfway like that, Obviously, it's just less than halfway, because if you do it halfway, it locks, but just less than halfway. And I rotate that in a clockwise direction, continually rotating it clockwise. What it does is reciprocate. Now, I'll give you a close-up of that. I'll fasten it together and give you a close-up of it so you can see that reciprocation. But before we do that, I've obviously taken the time to make this by hand out of bits of hardboard and bits of dowel. Now, you could make this out of absolutely anything. I mean, sheets of brass and brass bar would do it. This can be made just with a drill and a few hole saws, which is kind of really cool. Now, I don't want to sort of get into it much, but things like laser cutters and CNC machines and 3D printers are awesome gear. That is very true. They are absolutely awesome. But they're like anything. They're good for the position that they occupy within the makerspace. So I can make something probably uh, five to eight times quicker than I could 3D print it. So if I wanted to 3D print these, I could do, but I will make about 10 of these in the same time that it would take me to physically 3D print one, let alone finding the design or maybe doing the design myself. I'm much quicker at this stuff than a 3D printer. 3D printers are limited by the size. Something like this, it's a possibility to 3D print it. Something using gears that size, 3D printing becomes very much more difficult because they're just too big. So I think it's important to keep in touch with these mechanisms and these ways of doing things. It's a bit like buying your food. If you only ever go to Asda and get your chicken ready wrapped, you lose touch with the way that food has actually been produced. And this is a known problem today. It's the same thing with makerspaces. If you lose touch with the tools and the requirements and the skills to make something by hand from scratch, you lose something. You lose the connection to the thing that you're making and it becomes a bit of a mystery. So it's important, I think, to be able to do that. And equally, they have a space in which they operate. So hand-making stuff, peg gears, are important in that space, I think. Anyway, let's have a close-up of this operator. <coughs> Okay, so you get a better view of the reciprocation. I've put this little arm on. So if I turn this in one direction, then you'll see that that arm basically waggles backwards and forwards, which, if you think about it, is actually really cool. <laughs> okay, 
I think that is particularly cool. Of course, the question is, what can you do with such a thing? Well, there's a ton of things you could do with it. I mean, um, that arm moving up and down like that under your gear control, remember, just stick a motor on there, and that's going to wave about in uh, an up and down motion, as we saw. So you could do something like a fret saw with it, a hammer with it. I would use it to run the bellows and the bellows air conditioning that we made in a previous video set. But you could also attach a magnet to it and get that to wave in and out of a coil and you would actually generate with such a thing. So I was asked to do this on peg gears. That's what I came up with to illustrate them. Remember, they can be that way, they can be straight out, they can be in cages and they're really quite easy to make, very forgiving and you can adapt them to do a whole ton of jobs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.